Welcome back prop builders. I have another tutorial here for you today. We're going to make eye beams. All right. So the first step that we're going to do is I have a piece of pink of a piece of pink foam in front of me. I just have a, uh, some, uh, foam board under here just to protect my, my table. Uh, the pink foam is uh, 13 inches long. That's going to be the, the length of our eye beam. And then we're just going to go ahead and measure out a one inch row. So you're going to make your mark in for one inches and then another one up here so you can line up your line pretty straight. I'm just going to go ahead and connect those, uh, those two dots just to get a good straight line. I like to flip over my ruler because this does have cork on the bottom of it and it kind of creates a little raise. So I want it as flat as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and make my line. My line. make a couple passes just to make sure it's nice and straight and that's going to be the center of our I-beam I'm going to go ahead and cut this out off camera and then come back and then we'll uh, cut out the rest of the pieces all right now that we have that piece cut out I'm going to set that aside and we're going to get to the next uh, pieces for the I-beam and what I have here in front of you guys is um, foam board white foam board that I bought at the Dollar Tree because the paper comes off really easily which is going to come in handy in this project and this piece of uh, foam board is 13 inches long and what we're going to want to do we're going to want to cut out two rows that are an inch and a half wide and the reason why we want an inch and a half wide because our I-beam is one inch wide and we're going to want a half an inch overhang on both sides for the I-beam so I'm going to go ahead and mark two marks on here so I can line up my line pretty straight so when I cut out comes out fairly even. Sorry if you guys can't see the marks with uh, the black foam board and the black pen. But I'm just gonna line up my two dots like last time and then go ahead and make my straight line all the way across. Make sure it's nice and straight and even. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut two of these out and then come back with both pieces. All right, now that we have our foam core board cut out in the two strips, just to remind you guys, they are an inch and a half uh, wide and then 13 inches long. So the next step that we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and peel back the paper on here. If you do it carefully, you could get it off in one piece. Like I said, this is the cheap uh, dollar store fo foam core. So this paper comes off really easily, as you can see. So I'm just gonna take both of these off And tell you what's next so now that we have the paper off on these things we're gonna actually find the center and just mark them on the very ends that's gonna help us line up uh, when we're starting starting to glue so I'm just gonna get my ruler and I'm just gonna find the center of these and just make a mark with my pen which is right here so I'm gonna do that on all sides and I'm also gonna mark the center on my eye beams And remember, um, after you cut it out, this is how it is on the when it's laying down. You're gonna to wanna to turn it to its side and then find the centers of the sides. Okay, I'm gonna mark those and come right back. All right, now that I have my registration marks of the centers of each of the pieces, I just wanna show you guys real quick. I do have my lines right there. Same thing on the center of the pink foam. And I forgot to mention when I was cutting this out, uh, this is the one inch, uh, foam core or uh, pink foam insulation foam sorry about that um, so the reason why we want to make these uh, center lines is when we start actually gluing down um, you could just line up both your lines let me get it in camera you could line up both your lines and you could get it centered because you want exactly half an inch overhang on both sides to make your eye beam look um, as for gluing, you could actually use Elmer's glue or tacky glue, which works really well. Um, I do recommend if you are going to use tacky glue or Elmer's glue uh, to get little pins. So when you do glue it down, you can stick a pin through the back of it so it keeps it secured and tight while it's drying. Um, if you want to just do it fast and easy, you could use a hot glue gun. But the trouble is there, if you don't get the hot glue gun or the hot glue on down on type and your piece on there uh, and press down, it will dry and you will get some gappage in between both the seams right here. But that's a risk that you're willing to take for 
you know, speed basically to knock these out if you're going to make multiple of them, which I am going to use a hot glue gun for you guys. So the next step is actually applying the hot glue. And what I like doing is applying the hot glue on the actual centerpiece of the I-beam. I just do a couple of globs here and there. And it always helps to have your hot glue gun preheated because it keeps uh, the hot glue a little bit warmer than usual. I'm going to go ahead and line up the lines that I made earlier as best I can. And you want to push down while the hot glue is drying. And if you do have a little bit of spillage right here, you could get a pencil or an old credit card or if you, if you don't mind the heat, your finger. But it is really hot. I'm just warning you guys not to burn yourselves. That one's on pretty good. And I'm going to just apply the next one. I'm just going to go ahead and apply a generous amount of hot glue. Especially at the ends, you want to really get a good glob there. Kind of want to be quick about it too. Like I said, you don't want your hot glue drying and leaving that gap. So I'm going to go ahead and line up my marks. Okay, now that I got my marks, I could get back into the camera. I'm just pushing down as the hot glue is drying to make sure it sets flush as possible. And I do recommend using the Elmer's glue or tacky glue because even though it's a longer dry time, you do get a better uh, seal, especially if you mess up with the hot glue. And then this is a really thick I-beam, as you can see with the center being really thick. There's also traditional I-beams that are less um, heavy duty. Um, if you want to make those, you could just cut, this is the one inch thick. Like I said, you could just cut it in half and then put it in the center as well. You're going to want to take half an inch from the width of um, the white foam board that you cut out so you can make a skinny I-beam. But I really want a really thick I-beam, especially if I'm going to throw it in a diorama or something. I really want it to stand out. Uh, but basically, that's pretty much it of gluing it together. Um, if you do want to add a little bit more realism and add some weld lines, you can grab your hot glue gun. And if you did mess up with the hot glue and you didn't feel like ripping it off, um, this is the time you could fill in your cracks with the hot glue. Just run a bit of hot glue and then wipe the excess off. But uh, like I said before, we're going to add some realism and we're going to add some weld lines with our hot glue. And we're just going to go on the seams. And this is where the weld line would be. We're just going to add a line of hot glue just like that. We're going to do that to all four sides and then we're going to come back. All right, now that I put in the fake uh, weld lines with my hot glue gun, I just want to give you guys a look before we start actually painting this up. So I don't know if you guys could catch that. Uh, it looks better in person. You could actually tell that it looks like a weld line. I did it on all four sides. And so the next step is actually painting. We're going to actually uh, hit this with the black wash. Um, if you guys don't know what a black wash is, I explain it in uh, my black wash tutorial. I'll leave a uh, a link to it so you guys could check that out if you guys haven't seen that yet I explained different ways to water down your black paint to make black washes But I'm gonna go ahead and black wash this whole thing and we're gonna come back and then start adding the layers of paint that we want on there All right now that we're back having our uh, eye beam all black wash We're gonna move on to some painting and with the color. I'm gonna use this. Uh, it's a steel gray I'm just gonna dry brush dry brush this color on there. I'm just gonna put some right here on this um, foam board that I have laid down so all we're going to do is apply our dry brushing technique to this whole thing. Um, I do want to mention before we start painting, the hot glue, uh, the black wash doesn't stick on there. It actually becomes really translucent. So you're going to just want to hit that with straight black paint just to get that hot glue covered in paint fairly well. So we're just going to apply our dry brushing technique that we used before. And we're just going to dry brush this whole thing with this steel gray color. So I'm going to go ahead and start this, finish it up off camera, and we're going to move on to the next step of the painting all right now that we got that steel gray painted all up on our or dry brushed on our i-beam we're going to add some detailing with a, a silver type paint and as if you remember we did those fake weld lines with the hot glue we're going to hit those with the the silver paint and we're also going to hit some of the edges just very lightly just to show that there's some type of scratch marks and also the weld lines will be a lighter color than the actual steel because it was just welded so i'm just going to just dry brush All those weld lines that we created just to make them pop 
And I'm also going to dry brush the front of it because that's where the that's where the steel was cut as well. So just just apply a little bit here and there. And if you wanted to, you can actually paint this whole I-beam, this silver paint, if you wanted to look like a polished off uh, piece of iron. So I'm just going to finish up uh, dry brushing the silver paint on the glue lines and the edges. All right, now that I have the dry brushing all done, you do want to seal your project um, with some Mod Podge or even um, if you did, if you do coat this with a layer of uh, Elmer, watered down Elmer's glue, you can spray paint it. Just be really careful. If you miss the spots, it's going to eat away at the foam. Um, as you can see, there's the silver dry brushing in there. I really, if you're careful enough, you're going to get it nice and clean on your weld lines. It's going to look really realistic. But I like the two-tone with the steel gray and that silver matched up together. I am going to have uh, some uh, pictures at the end for you guys so you guys can get a close-up look at these. I do like uh, painting these also um, yellow and also red because sometimes uh, I-beams, that they'll paint them, especially in structures. If you guys want to see how I make I-beams uh, in a smaller scale for like mini-mates or even Legos, um, I can make a video for you guys. Just uh, leave a comment down below telling me. And as always, guys, don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and hit that sexy subscribe button.